Jordan Maxwell joins us tonight. Jordan, of course, one of the preeminent scholars studying world geopolitical control. He has been doing it for over 50 years. Jordan is an extraordinary resource. He is a living icon. In fact, in uh, Japan and other Asian countries, but primarily Japan, uh, when people get up to a certain age in life and have accomplished a certain amount of expertise, uh, good in their field of endeavor, they are declared living monuments in order to pay respect to them while they're still here. And I kind of like that. I think of Jordan Maxwell as a living monument. And we're going to be joined by a friend of Jordan's. We'll call him Joe tonight. In fact, any other night as well. His name is Joe. But first, let's say hi to Jordan. How are you, my friend? How goes it? Well, thank you much, Jeff, for being on again with you. It uh, feels kind of strange being back on radio. But uh, here we are. Always happy to be with you. Oh, good. It's... uh been a lot of time, many years. We've heard some amazing things, and you've shared some extraordinary information. I will never forget the stories of your UFO encounters uh, (laughs) north of area, uh, well, S4 up there in that area. You weren't in S4, but the little alien, uh, Area 51, Mm -hmm. how you drove out on the dirt road, and, and you were, I remember this, you were directed to turn down, it was pitch black, and you turned down a road off a dirt road, and this is a dirt road out in the middle of nowhere, folks. And uh, all of a sudden, the sky, the clouds opened up, and down through the clouds came a number of illuminated objects, and you were in a convertible automobile, as I remember. Yeah, and <clears throat> there were two other people with me that yeah. night. There was yeah. uh, my editor friend, uh, Paul Tice, and, uh, and Ivy West. So there were three of us that saw it, and uh, the two of them... There were seven UFOs, seven of them, and they were they were glowing uh, bluish white, and they stopped directly over our heads and just stopped and sat there. And uh, it, it it actually, in fact, scared me. It truly was frightening to me. <clears throat> but uh, to my uh, two friends, they thought it was you know they thought they were seeing Santa Claus for the first time. They were dancing around, saying, "Well, what a wonderful." experience and how beautiful they are, but I, I, I wasn't. I was very much afraid. And that very night, when we got back to the little alien uh, in our room, we had an alien visitor in the room. So this is why I, uh, I when I hear stories about uh, aliens up at Area 51, there's no doubt in my mind, because one of them came in our bedroom that night. So, well, I remember the story. <clears throat> We, yeah. It's it's in the archives. You can you can all hear it and uh, a remarkable life you've led. Yeah, so I have uh, had plenty of those kind of experiences. Thirty yeah, six yeah. experiences in my life like that. I remember oh. the other one when you were walking down the road at night. I think in your pajamas as a youngster. Yeah, at, at, I was about car, seven or eight years old. Yeah, the car yeah. came by. Yeah. Yep. That was another amazing story. Well, yeah. well uh, what amazes me is the speed and rapidity by which evil has just sprung the trap. They've been planning for centuries on how to take control, total control of the Absolutely. planet and its people, its countries, its wealth, uh, and all the rest of it. But I think beyond that, there's another big prize, and that big prize is is the human soul, the human consciousness. That's what I think. I think they have co-opted that and uh, are well underway uh, in their plans to re-engineer the human soul to more closely fit something that will serve whatever purpose they're after. I have no idea what it is. I think you're right. That's exactly right. uh, There's a scripture in the Old Testament that says, uh, the sons of this world are wiser in a fleshly way than are the sons of light, which is extraordinarily true, accurate. The sons of this world are uh, are far more enlightened and educated than are the sons of light and are good people. The bad are brilliantly uh, bad. They have extraordinary knowledge on how to manipulate the human race They've uh, they have destroyed 
humanity all over the world. They have kept our human family ignorant, ill-informed, and unread, and bamboozled the human race with their silly games and, and wars and drugs and alcohol and all the other, uh, along with television. And so they have mastered the human race and completely confused us, we humans. So I don't know who these people are, but they're good at what they do. And like the Bible says, that these, these people who are world, uh, the people of the world that are doing these machinations are far, far wiser than the good people that they're ripping off. That's always been the case. Normal good wow. people, I've said this many times to you, that uh, good people very seldom ever get organized on a massive scale to do anything. It's and they true. get organized around the city, you know, to do small things. But sure. <clears throat> but these masters who are raping and destroying you know, Christian civilization, they have been planning this for over hundreds of years. And this is massive uh, uh, coordination with money, and power, and drugs, and uh, it's a massive thing. This is why uh, I. You know, most people are not able to get their minds wrapped around how actually well, uh, how well this machine really is, and how big it is, and how well uh, financed and organized and directed this this tremendous machine that is marching over the earth. And it puts me in mind of some things which I've, you know, in Hollywood movies like Steven Spielberg's War of the Worlds. When you see this uh, this uh, UFO thing coming out of the ground and disrupting the city and destroying everything, yeah, and then it's yeah. walking over the earth in all countries, destroying, raping, and pillaging, and frightening the whole world. Uh, what was uh, what was that story originally all about? Well, it was written by uh, or uh, what is they Wells H G Wells H G. And H.G. Wells was one of the founding members of the Fabian Socialist Communist Party. Mm-hmm. Uh, became known as the Communist Party, but it's called originally the Fabian Socialist Movement. And uh, and their idea was is that to take over the world, but to do it in such a way that no one would even recognize it happening until it was too late. And so... Uh, uh, you know, this was uh, H.G. Wells was one of the founding members of the uh, Fabian Society. So I think that that's probably what he was really talking about in his book, War of the Worlds. The War of the World of Mankind as it has been, as opposed to a new world order. Mm-hmm. And so there's going to be mm-hmm. a massive. Uh, international and massive war going on to destroy the old world order in order to bring about a new no. world order. So, We're, in a matter of speaking, it is a war of the world. And uh, I'm sure... That's fascinating, yeah. And I'm sure Steven Spielberg knows that. No doubt in my mind about it, because so many of his movies and cartoons for children mm-hmm. uh, have all overt Communist stuff right there mm-hmm. in your face, mm-hmm. using communist terminology, Marxist-Leninist terminology, symbols it's, and emblems of the old Soviet uh, communism. is right in your face if you know what to look for. It's, uh, it's crucial to remember that Stalinist, Leninist, Socialist communism otherwise known more properly as Bolshevism, Mm -hmm. is a pure Zionist Jewish construct. Now, that's that's the secular part of it. We're not talking about the religious aspect. Zionism is a worldwide geopolitical engine of domination and subjugation. All right? It's not a religion. No. Anybody can. There are 35 million Christian Zionists in this country. Yep. Uh, they are considered to be very dangerous people, even by the government now, which has listed many of them as potential terrorists. <laughs> it's well, crazier all the time. Well, I'll tell you, there's a book, and we've talked about this book before, but I would highly suggest 
that you maybe you might even be able to find it as an ebook for free on the web. But I would very much uh, suggest that you might want to get this book one way or the other. It's uh, called Fire in the Minds of Men. It's written by James Billington, B-I-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N, Billington, James Billington. And uh, James Billington, Fire in the Minds of Men. He happens to be today the uh, chief librarian for the Library of Congress. So he's very much a, 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 you know, a systems man. Oh, yeah. And he's very well-informed and extraordinarily brilliant writer. I really admire the way he lays things out so incredibly. Oh, fascinating. That's quite an endorsement from you. Everyone needs to know this book. It's called Fire in the Mind of Men by James Billington. B-I-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N, James Billington, and uh, as I said, he's the chief librarian today of the Library of Congress. wonder if we can get him uh, on the program. Yes, I mean, he would be sensational, because he is an extraordinarily brilliant writer. But the thing I like about his book is that it's a very thick book, incidentally, quite a a large volume, but it's so well-written, it's fascinating, you can't put it down. He, he, he talks about the Bolshevik movement, the socialist world, socialist movements around the world whose financing of where the money comes from, <clears throat> ties it into uh, the religions of the world from the, uh, from the British-Israel World Federation, connections with, uh, with the Zionist movement, the, the, uh, it's, it's just an incredible uh, array of darkness that has been set up all around the world to manipulate the whole entire human family on the earth into a one world, a totalitarian world state. And he outlines it and gives you one third of that book, or almost one quarter, I would say, of that thick book is footnotes. He has footnotes on everything, where everything came from, who's doing it, but I think it's, the part I liked about it is when he gets into the occult religious aspect, all the different churches and the cults and the different religious orders that are connected to the world Zionist and the entire superstructure of this dark uh, machinations for hundreds of years that have been spawning religions from Jehovah's Witnesses to uh, Seventh-day Adventist, Second Adventist movement, Worldwide Church of God, uh, British uh, churches, American churches, especially the Episcopal and Presbyterian, and especially the uh, the Methodist Church, and how all of these churches and all of these institutions and educational institutions are being financed, organized, and directed behind the scenes by an extraordinarily brilliant and old order that is manipulating the entire planet. And again, this is a chief librarian for the Library of Congress laying out the entire scheme and how it works and what the words mean. And he gets into, uh, and, and what's fascinating is that he talks about Moses Hess, uh, and brings him up uh, quite a bit. Moses Hess, the, uh, the Jewish rabbi, rabbinical authority, uh, <clears throat> was the first man who actually uh, married communism to religion and and, uh, and Judaism. And he brings out how, and he shows all the documents on how Moses has um, brought the concept of communism into Judaism and ultimately uh, into Christianity and ultimately then from there into the uh, Western world politics, and, that, uh, and, and explains the Jewish connection 